Hello everyone. In this video, we will be discussing about byproduct utilization of the rice mill. So, as we have already studied the rice milling, during the milling of rice, there are a number of byproducts which are being produced, and all these byproducts need not be wasted since they have a number of uses in the food industry as well as some other industries. So, in in today's lecture, we will be looking at all the utilizations of the byproducts which can be done. First of all, if we look at what all products are produced during the rice milling, so there are these main these five products which are being produced. So first one we have is the husk is being produced, and then we have the bran. So just to give you a revision, the structure of the rice, the outermost layer bran, which is removed from brown rice to produce white rice, is being removed, which is around eight percent of the total rice weight. So uh, so bran will be present in very high quantity it will be produced in very high quantity and then we have the outer covering husk which is also being removed that is around 20% of the total rice so that is also being removed in order to obtain rice a uh, brown rice or white rice so again that is 20% uh, of the total weight and again it will go waste which is a large quantity so this can also be utilized and then we have the broken rice so already discussed in the milling that during the milling what will happen is that some rice because of the abrasive and certain frictional forces utilized during milling the rice uh, can be broken into smaller fragments and many broken rice can be produced so again these broken rice need not go waste they can also be utilized and then we have germ so as we know in the rice structure around 2% is the germ portion which consists of the mainly the uh, lipids and the rich in vitamin e uh, the motive during the rice milling is not to remove the germ but sometimes what can happen is the germ can also be removed but however it will be present in very very small quantities so uh, it is not present in such a huge quantity that it can be utilized as a byproduct but again since germ is very very rich in lipids and fats germ can sometimes be utilized for fat extraction if if required or if we have germ in considerable quantity we can utilize it for the fat extraction then we have straw straw is basically the part of the plant which is incorporated during the harvesting itself so it can be utilized in, in as a uh, cushioning in, in the cushions to give it a fluffy kind of a structure or sometimes it can be given to animals along with the feed so these kind of uh, these kind of uh, uses straw can be brought to in today's lecture we are not going to focus on the germ and the straw reason being is they are being produced in very very tiny quantities the major byproducts that we are going to focus are the husk bran and the broken since they are the major byproducts which are produced in very very large quantities and such high quantities should not be wasted so now coming on to the first byproduct we will be discussing the husk so as you know that husk is the outer covering of the rice so this husk can be brought to a number of uses and it is around 20% of the weight so if you are if we are processing around 100 kg of rice we are getting around 20 kg of husk itself from it so such a large quantity should not be wasted it, sh it should be brought to some uses and we have a number of uses in which husk can be put into so if you look at the composition of husk husk is generally made of it, it consists of cellulose lignin and silica so now when we say cellulose lignin and silica all the uses of husk will be ro uh, revolving around around its composition that because it contains silica it can be utilized for this purpose because it contains cellulose it can be brought to this use so we will be looking at all of those also it contains certain valuable chemicals and it can be used as an animal feed so if we look at the husk it has very very good use as an animal feed it is uh, given to a lot of animals to as a feed or fodder it can be utilized then we have it contains silica so since it contains silica it will be very good to be used as an abrasive material it will give that desired friction or that desired hardness so it can be brought to a number of uses as an abrasive material so we can use it for example even in the juice extraction it can be brought to use because of its abrasive nature it can be used as an aid to press juice out of the fruits and then it can also be utilized to produce certain other abrasive materials because of its very very rough and hard nature due to the presence of silica 
next it contains uh, it can be used for roughage so the reason it can be used for roughage is that it contains a very large amount of fibers so when we say fibers we know that fibers aid in feeling of fullness and are very very good for health as a source of roughage so for utilizing it as an animal feed it becomes even more valuable now because it is very very good source of fiber and it can help add a filling kind of a, a feeling if added to the animal foods so then looking at some more uses of husk that we have over here is that even husk finds a use in a uh, fuel for boilers kiln dryers and all of these so it is generally burned to produce energy fuel utilization is done from husk and kiln dryers it has been basically used so kiln dryers if we basically look at what kiln dryers are they are the most primitive kind of dryers which look something like this so we have trays on which the food is kept here to dry the food is kept and from here we are burning some kind of fuel so here we are burning and producing energy to dry this kind of fruits and vegetables or certain other food products in this kind of a dryer and kiln type of a dryer and a source of this fuel can be this fuel can also be husk so it has been used in a large quantity in these kiln dryers as well as in certain other boilers to produce energy heat energy for various purposes and uh, however even though it is uh, used as a uh, you know as a fuel very much but the fuel value of this husk is low especially if we compare to husk being obtained from certain other uh, other uh, food products for example oat and maize they have husk which give better fuel value than the rice husk still rice husk has a uh, finds a lot of uses and even what can happen is that the rice husk can be put into uh, use by uh, as a good fuel source by modifying it somewhat so we will be looking at that later it is used for insulating material also so what uh, husk can also be used as an insulating material since it helps to block uh, block the air coming and hence it has a very good use as a insulating material as well and then it is used in paper making so the reason husk is being used in paper making is that if we notice in the beginning itself we discussed that husk contains cellulose so once it contains cellulose the cellulose is the main component which is responsible for forming forming of paper so since husk contains cellulose it can also be brought to use as a paper making it can be uh, brought to use in paper making and cellulose is the main component in the paper which gives the fiber forming ability so because of its fiber forming ability of the cellulose the cellulose form, forms a structure and it is able to make the desired texture required in case of a paper so since husk again now husk contains cellulose it will have the same fiber forming properties and it can also be brought to use in the paper making industry so the paper making industry also utilizes husk and then charcoal from the husk has been used universally the husk contains charcoal which has been used as you as we know that charcoal is a very very good cleaning agent it is known for its absorbing properties right so charcoal because it contains charcoal it has been used to clean uh, to clean teeth by people from centuries so before all this toothbrushes and toothpaste came into existence people were utilizing husk even to clean teeth and to maintain oral health so it has been used for cleaning tooth just before toothpaste replaced it so now toothpaste has basically replaced all the almost all the use that husk was utilized as a as a agent for cleaning the teeth and mainly in india if we look at where it has been used mainly in kerala in kerala husk has been used for very very long time as a good agent for cleaning the teeth so now looking at some more so just as i told you right now that husk has a very uh, has a use as a fuel but it has a low fuel capacity that is why husk is being utilized in the form of husk rice husk briquettes are being made so if you look at over here it is converted into a different compressed kind of a form and similarly we have rice husk pellets so what happens is because the rice husk is somewhat loose and um, the fuel value is not very high what we can do is we can convert the husk into this compressed kind of a form into a very so what it what will it do it is it is it will convert your husk into a very high density form and this 
high dense because now it will have higher density as compared to the loose husk it can be utilized very very efficiently as a fuel so husk can be brought to a number of uses as a fuel in the kiln dryers boilers and many other functions in various other equipments and machineries and for uh, for the betterment of its fuel value since its fuel value is somewhat lower it can be converted into high density products such as rice husk pellets and then we have rice husk briquettes so in both of these form it can be utilized as a very good source of fuel next we have uh, brewing fertilizers and fireworks so husk also find uses in the brewing industry ha so husk also finds uses in the brewing industry so generally rice husks are used for brewing of beer so they can be utilized for that purpose and also as a fertilizer and a substrate so what we can do is this husk with the help of vermi compositing we can convert it into a good fertilizer so what will happen is during vermi composting husks can be converted into very very good fertilizers in about 4 months so it will take this whole process of converting the husk into a good fertilizer with the help of vermi compositing will take around 4 months and after that it is ready to be used as a very very good fertilizer and a substrate and it can help in the providing the nutrition to the plants and hence it has a very good use as a fertilizer as well next is the fireworks now this is a very interesting one to see over here that husk even finds use in the fireworks so for the production of fireworks by this industry also husk is being utilized the reason is the husk can be coated with the gunpowder and it can be used for the as a main bursting charge in the fireworks so it is added in the fireworks shell after coating with the gunpowder and it can also be utilized in the fire fireworks so now some more uses we have is first one is the juice extraction husks can be used as an extraction aid as a press aid help in pressing and improve the efficiency of apple pressing so it has been utilized very very much for the apple pro, uh, apple, uh, apple pressing and it can be used for certain other fruits also so next we have as a pet food fiber we have discussed this also in brief that because of high content of fiber present in the husk it can be used in a animal feed and because of the source of fiber it is a filler ingredient in the pet so what we can do is we can add this in the pet foods as a filler ingredient so the foods which are containing husk because of high fiber it will give a feeling of fullness for a larger amount of time to the animal because fibers will not be digested in the body they will remain in the body for a very very long time and give a feeling of fullness for long so because of the property of fiber it can be added as a filler ingredient in the pet foods next we have used as a pillow stuffing so if we uh, if we see the structure of the husk it is such that it is able to retain very very good shape so it can be added to give the desired fluffiness in case of a pillow and what will happen is the pillow will retain its shape uh, retain the shape of the head for that reason it is a very very good stuffing for the pillow so pillows are loosely stuffed and are considered so the use of husk for pillow is considered therapeutic why it is considered therapeutic therapeutic meaning giving a, a beneficial health effect because it retains the shape of the head so once it retains the shape of the head it will be very very comfortable the pillow which is made using this husk will be quite comfortable and again for this use it can be utilized so now next by product we have is the brewers rice now the brewers rice or the broken rice it is also known as the broken rice so the broken rice only we have the second name as brewer rice both of them mean the same now sometimes we can obtain this mix of bran germ and broken rice the mix can be obtained sometime it can be contaminated with the bran and the germ and the raw materials for For, for fermented beverages so it is a very very good raw material for producing of fermented beverages meaning it will find a very very good use in the alcohol industry so for the fermented beverages it can be used so now let us look at the uses of the broken rice or the brewers rice in detail so first one we have is that it can be processed into a flour so before we discuss this point we should know that since rice 
does not contain gluten there is no gluten in the rice hence rice can be produced to make gluten free products so what will happen is we have broken fragments of rice right so all these broken small small pieces of rice need not go waste they can be very easily converted into the flour so they can be milled and during the milling it can be converted into flour so what we can do is we can make rice flour out of this rice and once we are making rice flour out of rice this rice flour can be utilized to produce a number of baked products so for example the products which are made from the rice flour include a number of products for example even cakes and then even certain muffins cookies all of these have been made during the rice flour so what is the need for producing baked products from the rice flour we already have a number of baked products in the market such as cake muffin biscuits and all of them taste very very good but the need to make them instead of wheat flour or refined flour with rice flour is that wheat flour and refined flour contain gluten and people which are suffering from gluten intolerance or people suffering from celiac disease who cannot consume gluten at all need alternatives which are gluten free now because rice does not contain gluten it is completely gluten free it can be brought to producing a number of products for people suffering from celiac disease so this is where rice flour has a very very good use and also because of the good gelatinization properties of the rice starch it can be utilized as a very very good thickening agent also so even for example in custard powders and all this where the desired thickening is required rice flour can again be added so rice flour can be used for a number of uses in the food industry so again if we look at uh, if we look at the uses now so it can be processed into flour and it can be used as a food additive because of its nutritional benefits so not only for the production of a number of food products as we have discussed for people for celiac disease or simply for thickening agents and all this it can it because it has a lot of nutritional benefits because it will be rich in protein and fibers and all of that it can be added as a food additives in some products we can add it as a additive simply to improve the nutritional quality and then it is an alternative for producing gluten free products so as we have already discussed because rice does not contain gluten its number of gluten free products can be produced from rice for people suffering from gluten intolerance or celiac diseases rice flour is also hypoallergenic so when we say hypoallergenic we mean something which produces very less allergic reactions so if we compare we have a number of food products which come which give a lot of allergic reactions to people for example we have peanuts and we have soya beans all of these produce a number of allergies in a lot of people so for such kind of people which are extremely sensitive and might suffer from a lot of allergies from the food product rice flour is a very very good option the reason being is that it is hypoallergenic that is very low cases or very low chances of allergies are being reported from it so for this reason because it is hypoallergenic it is used for producing baby foods puddings and certain other products because of the decreased risk of people with sensitivities so when we say decreased risk of people with sensitivities it can preferably be put to use for baby foods because there we want to extremely be focused while producing the food product that the food product should not cause any kind of allergy to the small child so now looking at more uses of the broken rice so broken rice has a number of more uses which it can be put to and it includes that it can be commonly used in the pet foods so just like husk it can also be brought to use as a pet food since it is a very very good source of fiber again it helps with the bowel movement pets because high fiber content so same reason here also because of its very very high fiber content it can help in the bowel movement and give a feeling of fullness for long and thus satisfies hunger it is used as an ingredient in the beer brewing also so one of the main uses of the broken rice is that it is used as an ingredient for the beer brewing for this reason only the broken rice has got its desired name that is the brewers rice also because it has a very very good use in the uh, beer brewing and certain other alcoholic beverages so what happens is in the production of these beers the flavor aroma and the color and the mouth feel is all of this is developing when we are adding the 
broken rices mouth feel flavor aroma all of this but uh, there is one disadvantage is that when we are utilizing broken rice and not some other ingredient for example we can utilize uh, barley hops all of these are also utilized the color of the beer obtained is somewhat lighter in color and when we go for beer the lighter color is not that desirable but still rice has a very very good use even despite of the light color it is being used very very much the reason being is that it is much much cheaper and easily available so it has a very good use and it gives a very good aroma also the brewer rice also provides the raw ingredients needed as substrate for the yeast to ferment and generate alcohol so not only uh, not only the good flavor or the color it also helps in giving the desired substrate it acts as a very good substrate for the yeast which is present in the alcohols we which we are adding in the alcohols so that the yeast can act on this broken rice and it can it can ferment and generate a good amount of alcohol so the looking on to our third by product or the final by product which we have is the bran so now bran is the most valuable by product and the most important one which we are to discuss the reason being is that of its nutritional quality so the nutritional quality of bran is very very high so it is highly nutritive it contains 12% protein and it contains 15% fat for this reason it is one of the it is the most valuable by product of the rice milling industry and for the same reason it has a huge number of uses it can be put to as a because of a good nutrition so high amount of orizinol as well so why it contains high amount of orizinol because rice is a very good source of orizinol right and the bran coming from the rice also has a good uh, good amount of orizinol so orizinol as you already be knowing that it is the principal protein which is present in the rice so the main protein present in the rice is orizinol so it is very very high in orizinol also and high amount of oil source of vegetable oil so because it contains high amount of fat that is around 15% it can be used as a source of vegetable oil so even oil can be extracted out of it and because it is a very good source of oil it will be a very good source of oil soluble vitamins as well such as vitamin a d e and k generally vitamin e is present in very very good quantities in the rice bran so uh, bran obtained from different hullers so before we study bran further in detail it is very important to look at the bran which is coming from different hullers so what basically happens is see bran has a number of uses it can be utilized but for that purpose uh, the bran should be very very pure meaning the bran should not be mixed with the hull or with certain other raw materials the main contaminant is that the bran can be mixed with the hull or husk okay so it can be mixed with the husk or the hull and if it is contaminated with the amount of husk then it cannot be utilized very efficiently so for example oil extraction is being done and the bran is contaminated with the husk oil extraction cannot be done very well and the result efficiency all of that will decrease so what we want is what is desired is the equipment that we are choosing for the milling should be done very very wisely so that not only the milling of the rice is done properly but also the by products which are being obtained such as bran they should be pure in its form they should not be contaminated so if they are contaminated what will happen is they cannot be put into good use so for that reason we are studying the bran which is being obtained from different equipments so if we look at the bran coming from certain hullers it contains very very high amount of husk with the bran is present it is contaminated in very high quantity with the with the husk and hence it can not be brought efficiently to use as a good by product and then if we look at certain shellers also little amount of husk is contaminated with the bran so here also we have little contamination of husk and again there will be a problem in putting it as a use as a good by product and then rubber rollers so negligible amount of husk or almost pure bran will be obtained so when we are utilizing the rubber rollers which we have discussed during the milling as they are very very uh, modern and very very good equipment for the milling of the rice so whatever husk that they are uh, so whatever bran which is being produced after milling utilizing the rubber roller 
is almost pure and it is not contaminated with husk since the rubber roller removes around 90 to 95% of the husk in a single pass as we have discussed during the milling. It is very, very efficient equipment. So for the same reason, the bran which we are obtaining from this will be very, very less contaminated or almost in its pure form. So this kind of bran can be put into very, very uh, efficiently to use as a byproduct. So bran basically, uh, when we say bran, we can think about bran in three different forms over here. So um, what can happen is, it is divided on the basis of the oil content. So bran can be coming from, see the bran can be coming from two kinds of rice, either the raw rice or the parboiled rice. So once we say the raw rice, we basically mean unparboiled rice, okay. So the raw rice is a term utilized for unparboiled rice. So now what happens during parboiling is, uh, the rice is enclosed in the husk and it is uh, and it is being boiled in the husk. So what happens is the oil, uh, oil which is present in the outside from the husk is diffused into the endosperm. So what happens is the nutritional quality of the rice increases and not only the nutritional quality, certain oil, oil pigments which are present over here, the oil which is present over here, it will diffuse along inside and it will be carried to the bran the oil will migrate into the bran. So what will happen is in case of parboiled rice, the bran which we are obtaining will have higher amount of oil for the same reason. Because the oil has diffused from the husk into the bran and thus the oil which was initially present in the bran has increased. So the bran which is present of two types, either the raw rice or the bran can be coming from the parboiled rice. The parboiled rice will be having a higher oil content and the unparboiled rice will be having a low oil content in comparison to each other. So now if we look at them basically the bran can be full fatted coming from the raw bran that is the unparboiled rice and the full fatted coming from the parboiled bran that is from the parboiled rice or we can have a defatted or a de-oiled bran that can come from both of them once the if both of them is utilized for oil extraction, so we have utilized oil out of it. So once we remove all the oil out of the bran, what is left is the defatted bran. So what we are discussing over here is the defatted bran or defatted oil which is coming either from the raw rice or from the parboiled rice. It is almost one and the same thing because all the fat has been removed. Then whatever bran we are left with will contain very very low amount of fats that is around 1 to 3 percent. So now if we look at it again, so what we have is full fatted raw bran coming from the unparboiled rice will contain, uh, will contain oil around 12 to 18 percent of the oil will be present and it will be light in color. So as the amount of oil will increase, the color will also get darker and then here the full fatted parboiled bran which is coming from the parboiled bran because it is parboiled it will have higher oil content. So the oil present here is 20 to 28 percent and it will be relatively darker in color and because it has very very high oil content it has chances to clog the screens. So whatever uh, whatever processing method or whatever we are doing when once we are utilizing screens for the processing uh, what can happen is because of its high oil it can clog or block these screens and this is one disadvantage when dealing with the full fat parboiled bran that what can happen is clogging can occur in this case while processing of the bran it can this can be a problem. Then we have the defatted or the de-oiled bran from the raw or the parboiled rice which is only 1 to 3 percent of oil because all the oil has been extracted out of uh, out of both of these when the oil is extracted what is left is the defatted bran and the oil content as a result will be very very less. It will be lighter in color and it will be somewhat dusty in nature. So because it contains very less oil, it will be lighter in color. So now what are the problems associated with the utilization of bran? So once we are utilizing bran, there are a number of problems which are coming. So these uh, problems need to be looked after because as discussed, all these problems will hinder the efficient utilization of the bran as a good byproduct. So first one is the complete extraction of the bran is purely based on the purity of the bran, right? 
so we have discussed it that how pure the bran is will decide whether it can be put to use as a oil extraction or for certain other uses also whether it can be put to use so it should be pure it should not be contaminated with the husk or with certain other materials such as the broken rice or the germ and it can be unstable at time so because the bran contains a very high amount of oil what can happen is uh, there is presence of lipase enzyme as well which can sometimes make it unstable so what this lipase enzyme will do so uh, whatever are the fats in the whatever the fatty acids we have they can be broken down because of the lipase enzyme they can be broken down into fatty acids and glycerol so this is undesirable once these fatty acids it will be broken down it will give an undesired odor undesired taste as well so initially the free fatty acids content so basically we have fatty acids okay which are only around 3% but what will happen is because of this presence of lipase enzyme and certain other reasons the rice bran is very very unstable and after milling the free fatty acid content can keep on increasing every hour so initially the fatty acid content is 3% but one hour after that if it is kept after milling it has been removed from the rice then it is kept the free fatty acid become will become 4% after that the free fatty acid will become 5% and so on every hour it will keep on increasing so the free fatty acid content is increasing at a very very high rate which is going to limit the uses the bran can be put into so because of these reasons it is very very unstable and initial free fatty acid content is only around 3% but it is going to increase every hour after that once it has been removed from the rice during the milling so even during the refining of the crude oil is difficult as compared to other vegetable oils so once we will discuss uh, the uh, the uh, oil extraction process this point will be clear to you so uh, also more reasons more problems which are uh, rapid hydrolysis of the bran into free fatty acids and glycerol as we had discussed that what can happen is because uh, because of the presence of the lipase enzyme it can be the fat can be broken down into the free fatty acids as well as glycerol which is very very undesirable so hydrolysis of the fat is occurring because of lipase enzyme or water or certain other reasons and it is converted into the free fatty acids and the glycerol which is not desirable excessive amount of fine particles so sometime a lot of fine particles can be present in the bran which is again undesirable and then tendency of the finished oil to undergo flavor reversion so even after the oil is uh, uh, even after the oil is removed from all the undesirable free fatty acids which are giving the so these free fatty acids will be responsible for giving a bad odor bad taste so during the refining uh, process of the oil we will be removing all such undesirable components from the oil to improve its flavor and taste but what can happen in case of rice bran oil is even after the refining the flavor has been improved during the refining that flavor reversion can happen the rice can go back to the same flavor from which uh, the flavoring substances which we have removed and because of that flavor reversion is occurring which is again undesirable and it can be contaminated with the husk as discussed that is also one major problem excessive color in the refined and the bleached oil so again what can happen is the rice bran because of uh, the bran is brown in color right so what happens is the oil which is produced from the rice bran oil is not as light in color as being produced from other vegetable oil so the oil that we use at home obtained from certain vegetable oils such as sunflower and then we have groundnut all of them are comparatively lighter in color as compared to the uh, as compared to the rice bran oil so even after the refining and the bleaching process the rice has a darker color and uh, this refining and the bleaching we will be looking at during the oil extraction or uh, what these steps are lack of completely modernized rubber roller type rice mills for the production of pure bran free from any impurities so just we have already discussed previously that the rice which is coming from the uh, from the rubber roller husker that bran is the purest one and it is very very good for producing rice bran oil but there is a lack of such modernized equipment still there are a number of farmers or number of industries which are still dealing with the hullers or shellers all of this 
because of which the bran can be contaminated and because of the same reason it cannot be put to proper utilization because it is not in that pure form as compared to the uh, bran obtained from the rubber rollers and then proper stabilization of the bran. So even the bran that uh, is not properly stabilized as we have discussed that it is unstable due to the uh, due to the presence of lipase enzyme and certain other reasons. So now going on to the uses of the bran. Now the use of the bran will obviously depend on its purity and the bran main use is obviously the extraction of oil which we have discussed that oil is being extracted from the uh, bran but the which oil will be extracted from it again depends on how pure the bran is and how much is the free fatty acid content. So if we have a bran which is very very low in the free fatty acid content it can be very easily utilized to produce edible oil. But on the other hand if we have bran which has high free fatty acid content so what can happen is in that case edible oil cannot be produced but the brand need not go waste since again oil can be extracted from it but that oil will be put to certain other industrial uses so for example that oil can be utilized for the soap manufacturing so if the free fatty acid content of the rice is very very low we are going to make edible grade oil in it and that oil will be very high in the high tocopherol that is the vitamin E as well as orizinol and otherwise if the free fatty acid content is very very high and edible oil of good quality cannot be produced then we will go for producing industrial grade crude oil which will be used for the manufacture of soaps. Also the brian can be made to uh, can be used to make protective coatings and thus it is utilized in paint, lacquer and certain other enamels as well as bran can be used to make wax out of it. So as we know waxes are used in order to cover mainly the fruits and the vegetables in order to preserve them for longer time. Similarly rice bran wax can also be utilized for the same purpose and it is a very very good substitute for the carnauba wax because of its very high melting point and it can be utilized in cotton candies as well it is being utilized even for the coatings of the fruit and the vegetable as it prevents moisture loss and shrinkage. So we know what will happen is the fruits because of their uh, high relative humidity uh, sorry because of their high moisture content they have chances of losing moisture to the atmosphere. So if we coat the fruit or the vegetable with a wax coating it is going to have a barrier and it is going to prevent the loss of moisture from the food to the atmosphere. So as a result the fruit is not going to get dehydrated there is no there is uh, the shrinkage of the fruit will not be there and the fruit can be preserved for a longer time. So for that reason it provides a layer of moisture barrier and it can be used therefore it is a very good substitute of carnauba wax and the coating of rice bran can also be utilized for coating of the fruits and vegetables to preserve them for longer time. Rice bran possesses a characteristic nutty flavor which is similar to peanut oil it also has a very good nutty flavor just like the one in the peanut oil and because of that reason it is very very good to be used in the snacks it gives a very good taste in the snacks. So then we have use of defatted bran as an animal feed. So the defatted bran the bran from which the fat has been removed can be utilized to make uh, for, as an animal feed it can be given to the animals as a food and then even in fertilizers so the un uh, sorry the uh, the uh, the okay uh, it can be used in the fertilizers so the bran which contains oil that bran cannot be used as a fertilizer because of its very very high amount of oil but once the bran has been in the defatted form that is the oil extraction has already been done from it even the leftover solid uh, solid meal or the cake does not go waste it can also be utilized as a fertilizer. So what we can do is uh, after the removal of oil the leftover solid content can be converted into a fertilizer since it has a very good quantity of the three manorial man factory which is the NPK. So when we say NPK we mean the nitrogen phosphorus and the potassium 
So since rice contains all of these three in good quantity and these three are required by the plants for their good growth, it can be put to use as a fertilizer and then it is used for bakery products such as bread, cake, biscuits and then it can even be added to bakery flour for obviously improving the nutritional quality because the rice bran is very very nutritive, contains high amount of protein, fat, orizinol, vitamin E as well and then uh, also it has been used in certain medicines because it contains vitamins and proteins and it can be extracted. So uh, even in the nutraceutical sector we can relate it to that because of the uh, presence of lot of vitamins and minerals they can be extracted from it. So a lot of nutraceuticals can also be made and for the same reason because it contains a number of vitamins and proteins it can be utilized for the management of number of diseases as well such as diabetes high blood pressure, high cholesterol, obesity, preventing stomach and colon cancer. So as we have seen that it contains large amount of fiber, it can be helpful in managing colon cancer, diabetes, hypertension, all of these diseases, even the diseases related to heart and even for the overall strengthening of the immune system, it can be a very, very good food for the same. So now looking at the oil extraction process from the rice bran, so oil extraction is one of the main uses the rice bran is put into and because why we are extracting oil from it because it contains very high amount of oil which is around 15 percent in case of raw rice but if it is parboiled rice it goes even higher it can be around 20 to 28 percent. So a lot of oil can be extracted from it and that oil will be nutritionally superior as well a good source of vitamin E or all. So under the mechanical methods, we have equipment such as a hydraulic press or a oil expellers which will extract oil. So for example, we have vertical plates will be arranged and the raw material for oil extraction will be kept here and it will be squeezed in order to remove the oil or utilization of certain equipment such as a screw press kind of equipment which have screw kind of a shape and the uh, raw material to, uh, to extract oil is squeezed and the oil is extracted. So these kind of methods apply a lot of pressure for the extraction of oil and they are not that good. The amount of oil which is being obtained is not that high as well. So we have generally the modern method that we are using is the solvent extraction method and as the name suggests, we are going to utilize certain solvents for extracting oil out of it. So example of such solvent is N-hexane and for the production of the rice bran oil, the pre-treatment of the rice bran is very, very important which consists of steaming and drying the rice bran. So now looking at the rice extraction oil process, mainly it consists of three steps. So the raw material is prepared. So we have the rice bran will be taken and then oil will be extracted out of it using solvent extraction method. Once we extract oil out of it, this oil because it contains a darker color, it will contain certain free fatty acids which will impart an undesirable flavor, odor, taste. So all of that have to be removed from the oil before it can be utilized as a, as a oil for cooking or for edible purposes. So the oil in the crude form cannot be utilized and it has to be refined. So after the obtaining of the crude oil, what will happen is refining of oil will be done. So these are the basic three steps. First, we are taking the raw material that is the rice bran. We are extracting oil out of it mainly using the solvent extraction method. Certain other mechanical methods can also be used but the oil obtained will be very, very less and not as good as quality as obtained from the solvent extraction method. And then after extraction, we will go for the refining of the crude oil which is obtained in this step. So first looking, understanding how this uh, ref, uh, how this crude oil extraction and refining takes place. So the first step as we have already discussed is the pre-treatment which is given to the bran that is the steaming and the drying so that oil can be extracted easily out of the bran that is why we are giving the pre-treatment and then we are going to mix this bran along with a suitable solvent. So example of the solvent involves a solvent such as an N-hexane. So the solvent will have First of all, the solvent will be able to mix, uh, the oil will be able to mix in the solvent. This particular solvent has the property that oil is soluble in it. So it is going to, oil is going to be soluble in it, it is going to mix in it and second it is going to have a low 
boiling point. So because it is going to have a low boiling point, there is going to be an advantage that once we are supplying heat, the solvent can be removed very easily and the oil can be retained. So now what we have over here, it can be divided into two parts after this. On one side we are taking the micella and on other side we have the solid cake or the meal. So when we say micella, we actually mean a mixture of solvent. So it is a mixture of the solvent plus oil. So from this micella, if we are able to remove the solvent, what we will be left with is the oil that we want to extract. And on the other side, we have removed all the solid bran which was present. So wh what we did is, we basically, we had the bran and we mixed the bran with this solvent. And now we have extracted all of the solid material at one place and we have taken all this liquid solvent at the other place in the form of a micella because this solvent will, will solubilize all the oil which is present in the bran inside it and now the solvent is mixed with the oil. So we have collected the oil and the solvent and we have the solid bran particles that is the uh, bran from which oil has been removed, the defatted bran particles are in the form of a cake or a meal on the other side. So from this micella, the target is to remove the solvent. So because the solvent has a low boiling point, see if we take it in, in a particular equipment, what can happen is, so we have a mixture of solvent and oil over here. Now because the solvent has a low boiling point, if we supply heat to it, what will happen is the solvent will start to evaporate. The boiling point of the solvent is very, very low, somewhat around 60 degree. Celsius. So if we provide a little heat, what will happen is the solvent will start to evaporate. So the solvent will start to evaporate and the fumes and it will go out and what will be left over here will be only be the oil. This solvent is again not going to go waste, it can be collected very easily. So what we will do is we will attach one condenser which will, from this condenser water is passed over here in order to cool it and because it, it is somewhat cooler these vapors will condense over here and again convert back into liquid form and in a separate beaker they can be collected. So the solvent is also collected back through a condensate, uh, through a condensing system. So what we are doing is we have oil mixed with the solvent. Once we supplied heat, what will happen is the solvent will evaporate because of having a low boiling point and then we attach the condenser which is going to condense it back into liquid form and we are going to collect the solvent back separately. So the solvent can be utilized again and again and again for the extraction of oil because it is not going to be contaminated. The oil has been removed out of it and the solvent is again back into its pure form and again it can be utilized for the extraction of oil. Uh, so it can be brought to use repeatedly and what will be left over here is the pure oil. In this way, the uh, micella can be separated into the oil and solvent. So what will happen is this micella will undergo, we will subject it to evaporation followed by condensation so that the solvent can be removed and then whatever oil we have left, we can simply go for filtration of the oil to ensure that it is clean and what we collect is the crude oil. On the other hand, after evaporation and condensation, the solvent which is being recovered can be sent back again and utilized over here in this step again in the bran and the solvent. On the other side, we have the cake and the meal and this cake or the meal will again have, uh, can be, uh, this cake or the meal again, we had discussed when we were utilized, uh, when we were discussing the uses of, uh, uses of bran, that even defatted bran has a use as a fertilizer or animal feed. So again, this bran cannot be, cannot be left waste, it has a number of uses. So from the cake or the meal which we have obtained, again we want to remove the bran and we want to utilize the defatted bran. So this cake or the meal, so because we had added, added a solvent to it, this cake or the meal will also be contaminated with some amount of that solvent. So that solvent has to be removed from the cake or the meal as well. So what we will do is we will subject this cake or meal to steam. So once we are subjecting it to high steam, what will happen is because of the high temperature again, the solvent will be evaporated. So the solvent will be removed and what we will be left with is the complete pure 
defatted defatted bran which can be used in a number of uses such as we can utilize it as in fertilizers or we can utilize it for producing uh, as an animal feed because of high fiber content. So in this way even the cake or the meal finds uses because the defatted bran will be obtained for it and for that purpose we have to remove any traces of solvent which are which might be present in it to, to do that we will subject it to steam and again since the solvent contains a very low boiling point what will happen is it will evaporate and what will be left is the solvent will be removed and what will be left is the purified defatted or the de-oiled bran. So now if we look at basically the crude oil extraction process the rice bran is pre being present and first we are utilizing the air separator. So the, the use of air separator is simply to separate any broken rice which might be mixed with the bran. So these broken rice will be utilized separately as an animal feed and the, what we have is the pure bran over here. So first step is the cooking and the drying, steaming and the drying that is the pre-treatment which we have discussed that pre-treatment has to be given so that oil can be extracted efficiently out of it. So after the pre-treatment we are subjecting it to solvent extraction meaning we are mixing the bran along with the solvent in this step. So what will happen is distillation, condensation all of this is performed and as a result on the one side we can collect the solvent on the other side we can collect the crude rice bran oil and whatever is left the meal or the cake here we are dealing with the meal or the cake and here basically we are dealing with the micella that we are subjecting it to uh, evaporation, condensation, distillation all of this and then uh, remove, uh, obtaining the pure solvent from it so that the solvent can be utilized again and again and again for this process because the same solvent can be utilized n number of times since no contamination is being occurring and this particular meal or cake again on the second side that we have the solid portion after desolvitizing it removing solvent from it removing oil from it it can again be used as an animal feed along with the broken rice and we are obtaining the crude rice bran oil. So now after obtaining the crude rice bran oil also that crude rice bran oil cannot be put to use because it will have a lot of off flavor off odor. So all of that has to be removed for that process refining of the oil is done. So one disadvantage that we studied or one problem that we studied associated with bran was that refining in case of the rice bran oil is much more difficult as compared to other vegetable oils. So how this refining is basically done in the refining process we have to remove all of those which were providing an undesirable taste or odor. So first step we have is the degumming and the neutralization. So as the name suggests degumming meaning removal of the gums. So in this step basically we are going to remove any gums or any mucilages kind of a material which might be present in the fats and the oil they have to be removed and in the neutralization process again as the name is telling we have to neutralize. So we have to neutralize the free fatty acids which are present. So for utilizing the free fatty acids since they are a type of acid a base can be added to neutralize it and the base that we are adding is NaOH. So for that reason NaOH is being added in that step to neutralize the free fatty acids because the uh, oil which is high in free fatty acids cannot be used, utilized efficiently for the cooking or edible purposes. So in the first step we are removing the gum or the mucilages or and, and we are doing the neutralization that is removing the free fatty acid, neutralizing the free fatty acid with a base which is, N, with a base which is NaOH and after this we will perform bleaching. So as the name suggests trying to improve the color. So what we will do is we will add activated clay over here. As we know clay has a very good adsorbing properties so all of those coloring pigments which are present in the oil which are giving the undesirable color can be removed in this step. So uh, adding of clay will remove all the coloring pigments and make the oil lighter in color and then next step is the winterization. So as the name suggests winterization utilization of cold temperatures. So what we will do is we will subject our rice to cold temperatures around freezing uh, around 0 degree Celsius and what will happen at this cold temperature is all the triglycerides will be solidified. So this step is basically done 
to remove the triglycerides or we can call them as triacylglycerols as well. So triglycerides are being removed. How they will be removed is it is being subjected to cold temperature. Once it is subjected to cold temperature, these triglycerides will solidify and when they are solidified, they can be easily removed from the oil by filtration. So winterization is followed by filtration so that whatever triglycerides were solidified here can be removed, can be filtered out and then the crude wax oil, the triglycerides solidified are removed and then we have to subject it to deodorization. In deodorization, we are subjecting the oil to high temperatures, we are injecting steam in it and what this will do is all the all the uh, off odor is caused due to the uh, due to the ketones, aldehydes, all of this which are present and once we are subjecting it to high temperature and steam, what will happen is they will, they will volatile, they will get volatilized and they will be removed out of the fat or oil and as a result what we will obtain will be completely refined bran oil. So what we are basically doing, do, uh, doing during the refining process, the first step removal of the gums or certain mucilages which can be present. So degumming and neutralization is done. To neutralize it, that is the removal of the free fatty acids, we are adding the NaOH to neutralize the acid and uh, after the neutralization, the free fatty acid has been brought down. Now we have to remove the coloring substances. For that reason, we are adding clay. What this clay will do? It will adsorb all of the coloring pigments which are present in the oil. So bleaching of the oil will be done. As a result, the oil will have a lighter color. So if you remember again during the problems associated we discussed that even after the bleaching step, the oil which is obtained from the rice bran oil has a somewhat darker color as compared to other vegetable oils. And then next step we are performing is the winterization which is subjecting the oil to cold temperature to remove the triglycerides. So what will happen is these triglycerides will be solidified at a low temperature and once they are solidified they can be easily filtered out. So what will happen is filtration will occur and it will be these triglycerides will be filtered out then deodorization so removing all these small aldehyde ketones all of this which are present which can give off odor to the to the oil so how they will be removed by subjecting it to high steam and high temperatures they will get volatilized and they will remove and they will move out of the oil then what we will be left with is the pure rice bran oil so this is how basically the refining process is done it consists of these five steps that is degumming, neutralization, bleaching, winterization and deodorization. So winterization basically cold temperatures are being utilized to remove the triglycerides. With this I end this topic and I hope that this topic was clear to you. Thank you.